To achieve superiority on self-supervised ImageNet, this paper proposes a simple contrastive framework. So this paper is from 13 February 2020, Archive, a simple framework for contrastive learning of visual representations from Ting Chen, Simon Kornblich, Mohamed Norouzi, Geoffrey Hinton. Abstract. This paper presents SimCLR, a simple framework for contrastive learning of visual representations. We simplify recent proposed contrastive self supervised learning algorithms without requiring specialized architectures or memory bank. In order to understand what enables the contrastive prediction tasks to learn useful representations, we systematically study major components of our framework. We show that composition of data augmentations plays a critical role in defining effective predictive tasks. Introducing learnable nonlinear transformation between the representation and the contrastive loss substantially improves the quality of learned representations and free contrastive learning benefits from larger batch sizes and more training steps contrast com compared to supervised learning. By combining these findings, we are able to considerably improve previous methods for self-supervised and semi-supervised learning on ImageNet. A linear classifier trained on self-supervised representations learned by SimCLR achieves 76 top 1 accuracy, which is a 7% relative improvement over previous state-of-the-art, matching the performance of a supervised ResNet 50. When uh, fine-tuned on only 1% of the labels, we achieve 85.8% top 5 accuracy, outperforming AlexNet with 100 times fewer labels. In order to understand what enables good contrastive representation learning, we systematically studied the major components of our framework and showed that Composition of multiple data augmentation operations is a crucial in defining the contrastive prediction tasks that yield effective representations. In addition, unsupervised contrastive learning benefits from stronger data augmentation than supervised learning, introducing a learnable nonlinear transformation between the representation and contrastive loss substantially improves the quality of learned representations. Representation learning with contrastive entropy loss uh, benefits from normalized embeddings and approximately adjusted temperature parameter. Contrastive learning benefits from larger batch sizes and longer training compared to its supervised counterpart. Like uh, supervised learning, contrastive learning benefits from deeper and wider networks. Okay, so uh, he, th there's a figure two where th they show a picture of uh, of the idea how, how they perform this contrastive learning. So what they do, they take the original image, um, then they do two different augmentations on that image, then they do, uh, they pass it through uh, encoder network. Uh, which is some neural network, they get uh, this representation, which is called H. They get actually two representations, right? They have two different augmented images. They pass it through the, uh, the one network, the, the encoder, they get the representations, and then uh, they pass it through another uh, decoder, uh, projection head, projection head. They pass it through projection head, and they they get um, two uh, lower dimensional vectors, which then they, perf they perform a, sim a similarity on. Uh, yeah, basically he here uh, I will well I will skip this part. I will read it later. Okay, so they have different augmentations that they use. Uh, the, the most, the best performing um, was combination of two augmentations and that was uh, color distortion and uh, crop of the images. And, and they found that uh, out of different combinations of two, uh, two augmentations, this was the best. Okay, let's go, let's go. Here we have, uh, you know, the comparisons. 
Uh, there is also another point which wasn't mentioned is that, that they evaluated uh, transfer learning performance across 12 different image data sets in both linear evaluation and fine tuning settings. And then they showed that they actually did uh, better. They outperformed supervised baseline on five data sets, whereas the supervised baseline is superior only on two data sets. On the remaining five data sets, the models are statistically tied. I think that's also an interesting result. Okay, conclusion. In this work, we present a simple framework and it, it's uh, instantiation for contrastic visual representation learning. We carefully study its components and show the effects of different design choices. By combining our findings, we improve uh, considerably our, uh, pre our previous methods for self-supervised, semi-supervised and transfer learning. Our results show that the complexity of previous methods for self-supervised learning is not necessary uh, to achieve good performance. Our approach differs from standard supervised learning on ImageNet. Only in the choice of data augmentations the use of nonlinear head at the end of the network and the loss function. The strength of this simple framework suggests, that despite a recent, uh, such as that, despite the recent surge in interest in self-supervised learning, uh, this, the self-supervised learning remains undervalued. Okay, so that was the spiced juice of the paper, uh, and. Uh, in, if you like like this video, please uh, unsubscribe and dislike. And uh, I will continue now with slightly more detail. I will read a little bit more, and I will read also more about the method. And yeah, if you like, you can continue. Okay, I will start with the introduction. Learning effective visualization representations without human supervision is a long-standing problem. The most mainstream approaches fall into two classes, generative or discriminative. Generative approach is going to generate a revised model pixel in input space. However, pixel level generation is computation expensive may not be necessary for representation learning. Discriminative approaches learn representations using objective functions to those used for surprise learning, but train networks to perform pretext tasks where both inputs and labels are derived from unlabeled data set. Many such approaches have relied on heuristic to design pretext tasks, which could limit the generality of the learned representations. Discriminative approaches based on contrastive learning in the latent space have recently shown great promise, achieving the state-of-the-art results. In this work, we introduce a simple framework for contrastive learning of visual representations, which we call SIMCLR. Not only does the SIMCLR outperform previous work, in, uh, if you look at figure one, but it is also simpler, requiring neither specialized architectures nor memory bank. And so uh, here is the comparison. So this SIMCLR four times. Uh, performs uh, very similarly to uh, ResNet 50. Uh, w while having obviously a much bigger model, you know, a smaller model, small SimCLR um, is doing much worse than, than the ResNet 50. <laughs> okay, so uh, now more to the method. I tried to describe it before, but uh, here we go. Uh, inspired by recent contrastive learning algorithms, SimCLR learns representations by maximizing agreement between differently augmented views of the same data, example via contrastive flaws in the, in the latent space. As illustrated in figure 2, this framework comprises of the following four major components. A stochastic data augmentation module that transforms any given data example randomly, resulting in two correlated views of the same example denoted uh, xi and xj, which we consider as positive pair. In this work, we sequentially apply three simple augmentations, random cropping, uh, random color distortions, and random Gaussian blur. As shown in section 3, the combination of random crop and color distortion is crucial to achieve a good performance. Neural network-based encoder 
that extracts representations vector from augmented data examples. Our framework allows the various choices of the network architectures and so on. So they use ResNet here. A small uh, neural network projection head that maps uh, representations to the space where the contrastive loss is applied. Um, we use MLP uh, with one hidden layer to obtain um, to do with the ReLU nonlinearity. And so basically, they use this. Yeah, so they, they take the representation, they multiply it with uh, a matrix, weight matrix, right? They use nonlinearity, ReLU, and then they do another multiplication uh, by another weight matrix. And they get Zs. So they take H representations and they get Zs, uh, the um, vectors which they perform contrastive learning on. Contrastive loss function defined for contrastive presentation, uh, prediction tasks given set. Uh, they use prediction task. So basically, the contrastive loss function is uh, minus log of a fraction. Uh, well, which is kind of like a softmax, but not entirely. Uh, so within the, so again, uh, so it's minus log of uh, a fraction, which is, which looks very similar to uh, softmax of the um, contrastive similarity of uh, one of the examples with with all other images in the badge, except that they normalize by uh, case not being, not equaling the image. It's basically softmax, actually. Yeah, I will not go into detail. It's some kind. It's like a softmax, right? Where they take the one one image, they compare it to the other 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 image, which is also positive pair, and they normalize by all images in the batch. It's basically, softmax of the uh, of the similarity. Okay. Uh, yeah, and the, so the batch size here, because it goes into this contrastive loss, is important. So they look at the batch sizes, and they, uh, I think they say it also in the uh, uh, the summary is that they discovered that they like uh, they need bigger batch sizes for this version particular. Yeah, so in, in this part, they describe what they did to find out that the color and the um, color distortion and the crop, random crop, is the best. So they basically created this, uh, they did you know some kind of short training and created this top one accuracy uh, table of different combinations. And then they figured out, you know, they, f they found the top uh, performing combination, and that was it, right? That's what they did. Okay, then they mentioned that it was important to actually have to, yeah, that they also compared to having just one augmentation, and that wasn't uh, they as good, they really needed to. They have also the speculation here why they need the combination, uh, especially when they, they mentioned that when the, if they did just a random crop, the uh, there would be still strong hint for the network in the color. You know, usually the same images. Uh, you know, one image is is usually have just one type of color across it, so that would be big hint. So that's why they need needed to do also blur, uh, not blur, um, sort of. Uh, in, uh, color distortion. Okay, let's go, let's go. Contrastive lane is rendered surprised. Architecture encoder in the head. 
Uh, here um, they described that they needed a much bigger model to actually get the, to the same r result as the supervised, the supervised model. I think it was four times more. But also, you know, they there seemed to be something special about uh, the, the, the about the self supervised uh, uh, networks because. Uh, uh, but because of this result in transfer learning, there seem to be the network seem to be at least in this case seem to be learning something a little bit more or something deeper from the images, and uh, showing here that it's that it even seem to be superior. Uh, so here they say we know the the superiority of our framework relative to previous work. Uh, no, it's not this one. Well, basically, they they say here that they, you know, statistically they did better on more uh, data sets than the uh, supervised model. So there seemed to be something special about the self supervision, and maybe maybe the self supervision is actually uh, future. Okay. Okay, I will read you once more the conclusion. I think that, that those were all important points. I don't want to read everything from scratch from the paper. Okay, um, uh, conclusion. In this work, we present a simple framework and its instantiation for contrastive visual representation learning. We carefully study its components and show the effects of the different design choices. By combining our findings, we improve considerably our previous methods for self supervised, semi supervised, and transfer learning. Our results show that the complexity of the previous methods for self supervised learning is not necessary to achieve a good performance. Our approach differs from standard supervised learning on ImageNet only in the choice of data augmentation, the use of nonlinear head at the end of the network, and the loss function. The strength of this simple framework suggests that despite a recent surge in interest, the self supervised learning remains undervalued. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Please dislike and unsubscribe. And um, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. And I hope to see you next time. See